in here. There's reports in there. I think we have probably saw it. Right. So, okay. <laughs> Meeting come to order. We'll have the pledge. Of the span, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Upper Chatchester Township Board of Commissioners Caucus meeting, October 6, 2022. Um, in for George Needles tonight is uh, Ray Fuller. Ray, can you do roll call, please? Good evening, everyone. Mr. Bayakia? Here. Mr. Gaudioso? Mr. Burkowski? Here. Commissioner Neary? Here. Commissioner Whitaker is unable to make it tonight. Uh, Lisa Catania? And our solicitor, Michael Pierce, is unable to make it as well. Thank you. We'll open it up to the citizens' comments for the residents that are not able to attend the meeting. Uh, they could dial in by dialing 571-748-4021. The number again is 571-748-4021 and entering 649-302-434 pound. As I said, enter 649-302-434 pound. As your code to unmute your phone, dial star six. After you unmute your phone, state your name and address and begin your comment. You will be given two minutes to speak and be placed back on mute after your comment. We will leave the phone lines open for a few minutes. Take note, there was no phone calls uh, coming in for public comment tonight. Uh, we'll go to the floor tonight before we start our presentation. If there's any residents here that want to make public comment, you could come up to the podium, state your name and address and telephone number if you want us to get back to you. It's in the early stage right now. We don't have those all those answers for you right now. Um, we do know that we did approve the uh, plan that night with the conditions. I signed it. Uh, they appealed it. Uh, so we were at that time we were waiting for the court case and everything and, and that wasn't presented to us yet. As from that time till the end of last week, there was more plans presented to us. Uh, we will be in our executive session next week to see exactly the legal side, what to do. So uh, we don't do a hiccup and miss one thing and not get the right thing. So we're, we're, we're in early process right now. I have really no answer for you. Um, 
I do know we do want to move forward with the condition still um, and have our day in court on why we presented all that. But Mark, that's a possibility. But they presented two more set of plans for final. So now we have to act on them uh, at the same time. No, we, we, we have the plans and we have the plans in here, but we will be meeting as a board with the litigate or solicitor on our next move on exactly whether there's a there may be the court date presented to us by next week or how we act on the two the two set of plans that were presented to us Friday. Uh, do you know what the court <laughs> comment please? please. Okay. Ms. Yeah, the comment, please. Um, just so everyone's aware, there, the way that this is typically handled is the submission that has been appealed still moves forward. So that may or may not, depending on the other plans, go, go to court. Right. Okay. The other plans uh, have been submitted to the professionals for the professionals to do their reviews. I have not heard at this point whether or not uh, they will be on the agenda for the next planning commission meeting. My guess is they probably will not be, but I don't know that. Um, we receive the sets of plans. Typically, we'll get a subsequent email from George saying that He'd like to have them for this particular agenda. So that's where we are right now. We will move forward with doing plan reviews of the two submissions. There's just two alternatives to the preliminary plan um, that, that was presented in Richard. Three more questions. There's another 90 days. Thank like... you. So we'll still have, we'll actually, there was there. We have to worry about 90 days cycle from the, fir the first one, the pre preliminary, from this one. Okay. Those are the final. Okay. So the two new plans within 90 days could get approved irregardless. That's not really working. <laughs> no matter what <laughs> the court does. Is that what I'm hearing? I mean, I, I'm confused. Okay. Okay. Actually, mm does -hmm. take care. Uh, right. We won't. We won't know that until you review them, and then we meet next week. Right. It helps. It helps. Uh, mm -hmm. So, what's the likelihood that something would be decided next next Thursday's meeting? Oh, none. Nothing. Nothing at all. Okay. So, no. the fact that I have other things going on that no. night. And I don't have to go around to all of my neighbors again for, for next Thursday. <laughs> yeah, the preliminary that we we put up here uh -huh. is what we're right now sticking with. Nothing, whether Nothing there's a date going that. to the court or when the uh, engineer looks at their previews. As she stated, the, one of the plans may show the conditions without some of the ones that they're disapproving on, agreeing on. We don't know this yet. That's the part that you go to the commons, please, and say, hey, this is what we did from day one. And that's that's our argument. We we have eight, you only want to do six. We feel eight is what sufficient. We love a lot more, but having nothing, I don't want that. We don't want that. So, all right. 
when when do I have to get it? <laughs> I know you don't want to start all over again. <laughs> Correct. Same way with the planning board. Well, well, nothing, no, no official vote or anything on that next week, unless we know there's a court date. We're, we're going to court. That's it. That's fine. More than welcome. All right. Is it always that same? Yes. Okay. The code might be different, but the call-in number. The code might be a little different. That's it. Oh, no, you'll be busy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I thank you very much. Anything else we can help you with? If that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, can you please uh, say your name that's on the phone? Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, your name, sir? My name is uh, Christopher Ware. I'm with, uh, I'm, I live in Twin Oaks Farms. I'm actually calling uh, down at my uh, job in uh, Virginia right now. So I'm, you know, listening to you guys online. Um, I have a question. I'm, I'm not sure if it's the right place to bring it, but um, again, I, I live in a Twin Oaks Farms and I work at NASA down in Virginia. Um, over the summer, um, it appears that there have been, um, I guess, an influx of stray cats that have, um, you know, kind of come to the development and. Um, to make a long story short, I'm not sure if it was the township or the county that picked up about 25 to 30 of them, but they neutered and spayed them, and then they brought them back. So they're kind of all over the, um, the development. Is there something that can be done about that, or is there a certain division in the township that I should be calling um, to kind of get um, that? Yeah, I'm aware. I'm aware of the group that you're talking about that does pick up the cats. Unfortunately, they do drop them back off. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm not aware of anywhere else that we can actually. Not, I don't want to say disperse, but be able to place them somewhere else. So, uh, we will look into it. I'll let uh, Commissioner Whitaker know what's going on over there and see if there is a solution of once they spade and neuter them and they bring them back. What do we do with the 25 cats again? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Chris, can we have your phone number, please? Uh, my phone number that I'm calling from now? Uh, Whatever is easiest for us to get back to you. Uh, sure. Um, you want it over the phone now? Sure. Yeah. Um, it's area code 302-613-1000. Okay, thank you very much. I'll give that to the uh, manager and, and let Nicole know, and we'll see if there's any other, even the organization, they may have some other people we could reach out to to find out. Um, like I said, I am aware of that organization. I've heard about it, uh, but unfortunately, they do return them to the same place they get them back from. So. Yeah. Is there any other questions? Um, no, I think that would be it for this evening. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. And somebody or a manager will get back to you and let you know. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye bye. Are we good, Jasmine? All right. Thank you. We're mo moving along to our presentation tonight. We have a heart and soul community report is being uh, presented by Miss Lauren. Nice to see you again. Hello. My name is Lauren Aaron and I am one of the volunteers with Upper Chichester Heart and Soul. Thank you, Board of Commissioners, for taking the time to listen to our presentation of the Upper Chichester Heart and Soul Community Report. This community report is almost four years in the making. It is the culmination of efforts from the volunteers of Upper Chichester Heart and Soul, both past and present, as we work through phases one through three of the Orton Family Community Heart and Soul process. I believe you all received a draft of our community report over the past few months. 
Our goal here tonight is not to review the report page by page, but rather to highlight the purpose and the structure of the report as we prepare to share it out with the community. <laughs> this community report is a culmination of almost four years of story gathering, data analysis, and collective visioning. The purpose of the Upper Chichester Heart and Soul Community Report is to present a resident envisioned community action plan that amplifies the hopes, ideas, concerns, and calls for action of our neighbors. The community report includes ideas for action that are rooted in our seven core value statements. These actions have been crafted and vetted by the community and make up a vision for Upper Chichester that builds on past successes and current happenings while acting as a catalyst for even more positive endeavors. Sorry. <laughs> Structure. The report begins with background information about Upper Chichester then describes the process that was used to reach our heart and soul value statements. Phases one through three of the process are described in a timeline format, highlighting the milestones that were achieved within each phase. On the table of contents page, you will see a key that defines the meanings of the symbols. These symbols will be seen throughout the report and will draw the attention of the reader to the overlapping action ideas within the core values. For example, the telephone symbol represents the de desire for stronger or more efficient communication. This action idea is repeated over several, several of our core values. The symbols remind the reader that this idea overlaps with another action idea. These symbols also represent an opportunity to combine efforts and satisfy multiple action ideas across, across two or more value statements at one time. Through phases two and three of the heart and soul process, we identified our seven core values and with the help of over 100 residents, crafted value statements for each. The community report highlights each of the seven core values by dedicating two pages to each. For each value statement, we identify what do we value, which is the value statement itself. What we have to say, which is a summary of hopes or concerns of the residents. These were sediments that were emerged that emerged again and again in the data as themes or as ideas throughout the story gathering process. The what's already being done section emphasizes the successes of the township and other local organizations as it relates to each core value. What's next outlines the top four to five action ideas for each value statement. And lastly, the who can help us get it done section identifies possible community partners, such as organizations and nonprofits, that can help us to achieve the action ideas within each core value. Community engagement. The community report is designed to be interactive. As residents read through the report, they're encouraged to take notes, such as, in what ways would you like to get involved in your community and why? On each of the seven value statement pages, Residents are asked, how can you get involved to make this action idea happen? Our goal is to engage the community and spur community involvement while creating those partnerships that can help us complete the action ideas. The final page of the document is a conclusion and postcard. The postcard will allow residents or organizations to specify how they would like to get involved and include space for their contact information as well as space for them to identify the value or the specific action idea that they are interested in and would like to take action. Next steps. Community engagement is our goal this fall. Upper Chichester Heart and Soul is hosting a table at Community Day. We will have an activity for the children as parents and other residents have the opportunity to discuss the community report. We will also be onboarding volunteers for a November cleanup day our hope is that this cleanup day will be a stepping stone to a larger community-wide cleanup day in the spring, possibly to align with Earth Week. The Heart and Soul team plans to spend the next few months exploring 501c3 options and further solidifying our stewardship team. 
The role of the stewardship team is to monitor and guide the ongoing practice of community heart and soul. This team may be made up of current or previous members, as well as residents that are completely new to the process. I'd like to thank all of our Upper Chichester Heart and Soul volunteers, both past and present, and a special thank you to the Board of Commissioners for all of your support throughout this process. We'd also like to thank township staff and other boards, organizations, and community partners that helped us along the way, the Pennsylvania Humanities Council, and a special thanks to Jen Danfo, our coach, as well as the Orton Family Foundation and our coach, Leanne Tingay, and of course, to the residents of Upper Chichester, who we couldn't have gotten here without. We invite everyone to read our Upper Chichester Community Report once published. Our mission was to create a resident-driven community report that gives a voice to the hearts and minds of the residents. Our hope is that after reading the report, everyone will recognize the voices that were, lis were listened to and cared for as we crafted this stuff. And if anyone has questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. All right, thank you very much. Ms. Lauren, I'll open up to the board here if they have any questions. Everybody. I, I want to say thank you because with this four years in progress uh, process that you've been doing, uh, there has been some projects that were actually piggybacked on this year, Linwood Heights, a lot of the survey from the Linwood Heights, you booth went down center and it's continuing. And, and that's the part of this whole program uh, because I, I know with the booth went down center, we, there was a lot more input with the heart and soul and piggybacking with them in our uh, open house. And it continued. So they, they, I'm hoping the community, I hope they come out in November. I hope we get something out there. It's the first time I'm saying it for November for uh, cleanup. But hopefully we're all out there doing this and, and uh, we get it out on the public channels and everybody gets out there and do it. And like you said, a bigger one in spring. Everybody else does it. Why can't we? So. But I want to thank the two members on the board here too, uh, Judy, Chaz, Chuck. Or I, I get you guys confused. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> well, and Miss Lauren, you've been in it from day one, so uh, I thank you for all your hard work and the resonance. The resonance, if you're listening, it's a lot of it's the input that was put in throughout the last four years and continues. So. And like you said, everybody's welcome. New residents, uh, past, present. Just thank you very much for all your hard work. Yeah. Did you say active residents? They're going to be in the community port, like a preparated postcard that they can, um, as they read through the community port and you know, have ideas that they want to take action on or, or help with, they can actually tear out the postcard. And then we'll have, um, they can either mail it in or if they could drop it off the township building. And at community day, we're going to have like a little mailbox. They could actually put it in if they're actually actively reading it, filling it out right then and there. But yeah, postcard that they can mail and we're drop off. Hey, thank you very much. We're along with it. Yeah. We will move to our township professionals. We were engineers report, Lisa Catania. Thank you, Mr. President. I do have a copy of my report. Uh, there are a few things that will be action items uh, next week that, that I'd like to bring to your attention. Uh, the road program has been completed. The last punch list item was done about two weeks ago, recommending a final approval to AF Damon for $64,045.46. Please know that the Mill Road ADA ramp has not been put in. We are going to take that out of the program. It will be invoiced separately because we're still waiting for NIHOP to do that. Um, as well, uh, about halfway through the program was determined that in lieu of some other ADA ramps in Twin Oaks, that we would instead put a mid block crosswalk, raised crosswalk uh, at the church. So um, to, to keep the those that have to use ramps 
from from actually going in the driveway of the church parking lot. So we will be putting that in as well. Um, we will not have the materials for that probably for another three or four weeks, but we're going to have that separated from the invoices for home. A uh, reason for that is we need, in order for us to close out the road program, we can't start a project. We can't complete the project after November the 1st. We also have to have canceled checks in order to do the closeout report and not by the end of the year. So it was determined that was the best action to take. It's still using the fuels money for uh, the the threshold that we will have to get a second take care of it that way. So that would be on a list of bills for next week. That would be on the list okay. of bills for next week. Um, Boothland Highlands, we in, in I think you should have the the vid tabulation. That's the Peach Plum and Cherry Street Storm project. Uh, with the low bid was that of more construction. Their bid was at $441,365, excuse me, $565. Uh, Moore had, we, I, I know Moore pretty well. They've done multi million dollar projects, just actually completed a stormwater project in Ridley Township, which is also one of our municipalities. Uh, they, they will do a good job. We're going to recommend that award next week. Um, George has, we've already checked with George. Uh, it is in the budget to, to do that project. The Wawa portion of the Wawa projects, we have Propco portion and Wawa portion. Wawa has asked for a bond release. We are not recommending releasing the bond because there are some items that are both Propco and Wawa. Uh, on the punch list that have not yet been completed. What we're suggesting is we reduce the bond to $49,282.30. That's the retainage that is originally on the cost estimate. So we will recommend a, a bond reduction. I contacted the Wawa representative to advise her of that. They may choose instead of reducing the bond, putting up cash escrow and, and to close out that bond. So we'll have to work that out. That's what they choose. I have not heard back from, from her as of yet. Is the is defense part of Wawa or is that Propco? The, the, the black part that was because they had to order it. Because I saw the insurance guy has his up, but Wawa is still missing their section. Okay. That's it, most of this. The, the items that are are in contention, they, we have a let's back up. When the escrows were separated, there was a plan that was produced showing this portion is Wawa's portion and this portion is Propco portion. However, um, because some of the items were installed by Propco within that Wawa area, were it was determined it was better off if we did not release the total bond. Which I checked with uh, Mike Pierce to make sure that that's the way we should go. That was the way I felt we should go. Okay. And he agreed. Um, so we'll have that on the agenda. The um, other items that I'm going to talk about are merely for information. Uh, there was a complaint that we received from Paul Lux of PennDOT. And that's been receiving complaints about timing on um, Chelsea and Chichester Avenue. I believe the police as well, uh, I want to say maybe two weeks ago, had had noticed that there's that, that light is flashing from 11 o'clock at night to, and it's actually flashing until 5 in the morning. So we are going to produce a, well, actually, it's, I think it's in the packet, a TE-160, which is a signal permit modification, so that the light will be operational instead of flashing. Let's put some access to understand. Uh, 
so the light will not be flashing it will be operational through the, the evening 6 30 till 5 in the morning so that will be on the agenda as well the um i've been asked to take a look at greenwood avenue uh for a uh, land purchase that property um is actually a rather unique property. There's some steep slopes in there. It's it's meadow condition. It's natural land right next to the creek. So there is quite a bit of floodplain on it. However, we looked at it from two standpoints. Can we utilize that for something as far as stormwater management? I believe that we can do that. The other thing is we could also do it as some sort of a trail or a, a park area that will give us access to the creek. So um, just wanted to, to advise that that we had looked at it. I believe Bishop Neary was going to send an email to him on the agenda. So I'm just mentioning that. Um, I also submitted uh, two weeks ago the traffic signal Technologies grant. This will synchronize four intersections on Chichester Avenue from Larkin Road down to Meeting House Road. Um, we had it originally, we were talking with three. And speaking with PennDOT, they felt that we should do Larkin Road as well. And then we'll be able to tie into their transportation center system uh, once all of the work is completed. With that with the Conchester. That project um, is estimated at $1.2 million. There is no match for that, by the way. Uh, we did vote a $10,000 match just to get some points that we, we were interested in doing that project. Uh, otherwise, I believe everything else is in order. We'll have community development block grants. Um, Projects ready for the not the October meeting, the November meeting. We should be getting notification of that next round of community development block grant in the next few weeks. So in October. That's all I have. Unless anyone has any questions. Anything? Anybody have anything to be brought to the attention of the engineer? Lisa, the TE one hundred and sixty. For the contrast to in Chelsea, was that our recommendation or did PennDOT question why it was blinking so long? And question. Now took a look at it, determined that for some reason it was on a flashing program, which is what's on the approved plan. Uh, he's contacted a PennDOT. We redlined a plan because there is not a CAD plan. And versus spending money producing a CAD drawing at this point with the, the Conchester project changing that intersection, they're going to accept a red line. Okay. Anybody have anything? If not, uh, our solicitor, Mike, Mike Pierce, is not here tonight, but uh, his report is in the agenda. Uh, having an executive committee uh, meeting next week regarding everything else with him and manager report is long and that is Mr. Fuller, but we could touch base on that if you want, right? That's fine. All right, just to go through George's report real quick. So we got the heart and soul report resolution that has to be taken care of. The Delta Greenways and DCNR applications. The appraisal for the Algren Schoolhouse, the Act 135 petitioner request for 2319 Thomas, 2313 Thomas, and 2398 Booker, the County Demolition Fund application for 2305 Thomas, the Fire Relief Distribution Resolution, which I did get the information to uh, add this morning for that, the State Aid and MMO Payment Resolution, the Land Development Extensions, ratifying the hiring of Terry Sherling, uh, one of our nose crossing guards, and then the resignation of Kevin Fisher as a recreation board member from the fourth rule. And that's it. 
Joe, are we uh, voting for the crossing guard? They need need her right away or next week? You know, oh, okay. All right. Thank you, Gray. Uh, anything to be brought to the attention of the manager that Ray could jot down for him? If not, uh, I just want to make the, the comment that we're going to be voting on it next week. Uh, I shot an email out today regarding the fire relief money for the fire department. I want to put it on record here. I am not doing this to hold anything up, any money. This relief money comes from the state, which is just comes to the township every October, which goes to the fire departments, which is three of them. Uh, they requested that we split the check up three ways to the Ogden, Boothland, Reliance, Relief Association money. This money comes from the insurance company that helps them buy protect protective equipment, hoses, air packs, air tests, ladders, whatever they need, boots, uh, their gear. <clears throat> it only covers a portion of it. Uh, there's still a lot more money. In the process of a consolidation with the fire department, they requested to have this one check dispersed to the Booth One Fire Relief Association. I wanted to make sure everything on this end was okay with it. Uh, they're producing letters. I'm, I'm requesting a letter also from Booth One stating that is their intention to do what they said they're going to do. Uh, we've received one. I just want to make sure every, I, I did call the state auditor general just to find out. And it is to sole discretion of the board or any board to disperse this money however which way they want. It could be three quarters, quarter, 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 whatever it may be. So I just wanted to make sure because the consolidation is not completed as one entity yet. There's three different associations. I just wanted to make sure that we weren't going to get into a bind. The fire companies weren't going to get into a bind. Reason is they pay truck payments out of this. They pay equipment loans that they borrowed money off through the relief. When you borrow money through the relief, it's about 2%. It's, it's dirt cheap, but they still have to pay it back. So I just wanted to make sure we're not getting into trouble. They're not, we want the due process to be done. We have to disperse the money once, as soon as we get it, is once we get to all these letters to the board of commissioners, Thursday, there should be no problem to have the check probably go just to, it would still be booth when, Fire Relief Association, but they're acting as the Upper Chichester Volunteer Fire Department. Uh, they've been operational for the last two years, I think it's been, out of one building. Um, it's a slow process, but I just wanted, that's why the email went out. I just wanted to make sure we're, the board's okay with it on the legal end with the state and the fire companies don't get because trust me they audit the fire companies every two years and they dot the i's and cross the t's and if, if something isn't done right they wanted to come back out of the general fund to go back in and, and it's a lot of time for the volunteers because they got to get every receipt every purchase order and it needs to save relief associates so it's it's they don't have the volunteers uh, and it's tough for them so they're trying to the steering committee, which consists of two people from each fire company right now, for this consolidation, is trying to get things still as in one. So there's, I want to put it out there. I am not up here delaying anything purposely. We just had to make sure everybody was on the right page. We get the letters by next week, which I think the ones are a draft letter from Ogden already, Reliance, and then what Booth went agreed upon to say they're going to be able to do. Um, the only question we need to actually find out, Ray, and since I know you're in this helping out with a lot of it, is if the payments are through the Relief, relief Association for truck payments and equipment through the relief, does Booth would have to directly send it to that fire company and let them pay it? I'm, I'm not sure we could get that answer. Yeah, I did talk to Putt earlier about putting their letter together for Booth One. Okay. And he said in their letter, they're going to put in there about. They'll handle all payments for, right. uh, on behalf of our department. I just want to make sure that once I, if the state gets their truck payment or whoever made a yeah, truck yeah, payment to yeah, PEMA, yeah, yeah, the PEMA yeah. loans and stuff, does it have to directly come from that fire company? That means you guys would have to send it to them, then they would still disperse yeah. it out. So I'm not sure. We'll figure that out. So I, I just want to make that comment. Nobody's here holding anything up. We're moving along. 
Now we'll go to the reports of the commissioners, which is uh, Madam Vice President Nicole Whitaker, who is not here. She's at a conference in Pittsburgh. We will have a report next week. And we will move along to Commissioner Joe Nair. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, yeah. Financial, uh, the financials will be available next week, as well as the police report. The list of bills is in your um, package, uh, as well as the tax collector's monthly report and the two resolutions, one for the MMO and one for the uh, fire relief, but that all depends on what works out there. Um, there will be um, the um, motion to hire or to uh, place Terry Shearling in as a um, fire police. And that is, that's right, fire police clear. Uh, crossing, crossing guard, I'm sorry, not fire, crossing guard. Um, they would love to have another one. <laughs> that's all I have. Thank you. Is any of the anything to be brought to the attention of Commissioner Neary? And if not, we'll move along to Commissioner Mike Cardio. So, one is for nine hundred pounds of wide room. The other one is for thirty market street. And lastly, um, the other one is for six hundred six fifty Cherry Street Road. The applicant will be providing an extension. Commissioners withdrawing the application. Uh, 4,800 Hotchess Rapid. We spoke about that earlier today and our citizens' comments. Um, so there's two applications that have been submitted there's an application A and an application B. My understanding is application A is a final land development, which is based on the conditions that by the DOC uh, last month. I believe uh, a professional order in the process of Moving that application to see what conditions are being shown on the plans. Hopefully, uh, everything that we set forth uh, will be on the plans. They also submitted an application B, a different application, which is also being reviewed by the council. So um, that's where we stand with 48 new charges or whatever. Um, also, uh, just uh, on a note on the budget. Spoke to our um, department head for LNI. He would like to place in the budget for next year uh, the possibility of purchasing a new vehicle for the uh, LNI, whether it's new, used, or something. Um, they're 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 in need of a um, of an upgraded uh, vehicle. So just wanted to get that out to the board tonight. No, we're still in the budget process, so just wanted to make sure that uh, we were. Uh, that the board was made. I don't have anything else unless the board has a question for me. I, I have just one. Uh, 650 Territory Road is withdrawing the application. Um, they will either be providing an extension to the board or commission or withdrawal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is it is that one there? Is that with the different plan or the uh, that's the root, same one? Okay, <laughs> so no, no, yeah, I know it's them, right? Okay, anything else for Commissioner Godier? So now we're moving along to Commissioner Joe Biacco. Thank you. Um, we uh, had a couple of meetings with the uh, Highway and Sanitation Department as far as their contract goes. Um, uh, me and Commissioner Gordioso met. Uh, we have another one coming up this Thursday, next Thursday. Um, hopefully, we can have a little bit of an update for the rest of the board. Um, I don't, you know, we haven't hit no bumps in the road or nothing yet. We're just going back and forth with. There are once and are once, and it went pretty smooth so far. Um, the household waste item, uh, the household hazardous waste event is this Saturday, October 15th. I think the start time is 9 a.m. And uh, this is by appointment only. You, you have to call the Delaware County Solid Waste to register. The number is 610-892-9627. Um, you have to make an appointment uh, with them in order to be able to drop anything off. The, the, the items can include gas, oil, automotive products, 
cleaners, fire extinguishers, pool chemicals, or any other chemicals, pesticides, paint solvents, aerosol cans, and I think it's countywide. So, but by appointment only. Um, the sewer authority um, sent me their report. I'll pass the email, I'll forward the email to everybody else, and it's on file. Nothing, nothing's going on. We have a meeting coming up to try to get this uh, force main built and over with, which will help both our pump stations. That's all I have, unless anybody has any questions. Anything to be brought to the attention of Commissioner Biacco? We're trying to get to 20th for that date. So we'll see. If not, move on. That's all we can do. We'll go with my report right now. Um, I thought I had the, um, I didn't see it in tonight's report, but the emergency management report I thought I saw in there. It's a bypass or something. I'll look for it again. Other than that, the other reports will be in uh, next week. Um, as I stated with the fire department, they were still looking for volunteers, still moving along with the consolidation. Um, it's, it's, it's tough volunteering nowadays, but, and, and the medic units are doing very well. The busy as heck. Hopefully that that's moving along the budget. It was already I put that in for each one of them. So everything seems to be in line with that right now. So other than that, it's pretty quiet. Thank goodness. So not, anybody have anything for me? No, we need a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Good night.